So I have like three big projects going on right now, but in the meantime I figured I'd try and do something with the ANET A8 here. Right now I have this AlphaWise IP camera set up to look straight down at the bed, something like that. And it's just not very good. Like, I mean, you can see if the print has failed and stuff, but you can't really tell where it's failing or if it's a catastrophic failure, like with support or something. So all the rest of my printers, the CR10s, all run off of the, I guess, the far left-hand side Z motor bracket, or X motor bracket, excuse me. So I think what I'm going to do is put this IP cam, we'll design a mount for this right here like I I had previously designed one for the CR10, I'll post a picture right now. But let's do that for this side so it'll come out here and point at the print. So I don't know what I'm going to do because some people have a cutout here to deal with their belts, I don't. But I'll design this to be on these three just in case somebody with an ANET wants to use this with the cutout. So I'll take some measurements from here to here, kind of get what's going on. I'll base it off my CR10 design. So let's design it and print it. All right, so I didn't think I was going to do a design session on this because it's so simple, but I figured why not make some content, right? Why not? In between projects, might as well. So this is a remix of another uh IP camera, IP camera. Essentially, it's like a Yi Home. I use these to monitor my printers when I'm away from the house, or if I'm if they're printing downstairs. I want to. Uh, I'm upstairs doing something. I can use my phone, monitor where they are, and what they're about. So uh, we use this one uh, on the CR10. I designed this one. It's on Thingiverse. Uh, the remix information is on there as well giving credit to the original author that found the dimensions of the Yi cam itself. So uh, all these IP cameras that are in that same format as the Yi cam, they all will fit in these. So this alpha wise I have, which is just a knockoff of the Yi, that'll fit in there. So um, let's duplicate this and then uh, jump into modifying it. And I will put a picture up right now of my drawing. So those are the hole spacings at, uh, I believe they're three millimeter bolts. So M3 bolts that hold on the stepper motor. So what I'm gonna do is design this bracket around those dimensions. We'll bring the ruler out and we'll go to the midpoint and we'll set up our holes first. So I'm gonna do sides. I'm gonna make this as round as possible. I'm gonna set these to three millimeters um, sphere. I'm going to duplicate that three times because we need three holes. That's a control D to duplicate. And then I'm going to set this on the midpoint of the ruler. It's supposed to be using midpoints, but it's not, of course. Why would it? Okay, negative one five, we'll put it on the midpoint of the ruler. So then I'm going to set that 30.5 from that 90 degree angle. And that should be going to the midpoint. It's not going to the midpoint. Now it's going to the midpoint. Oh, if it says use endpoint, it means you're using the midpoint. So if it says use midpoint, it means you're not. Ugh, oh, oh, long day. All right, 30.5 for that. I'm gonna move this one to the middle of that ruler. 30.5 for that. Then I'm gonna move this one just exactly at zero. So now all of those should be, that should be set up to the side of our carriage for the unit A8. That's about right for me. 
And I know I'm being pretty lazy with this. Like you can use Fusion 360 and it'd be a lot easier and a lot better. And I know that, but I have the, uh, the original model in Tinkercad already. And you know, what's the point? Why not just use Tinkercad? There's no reason to, no reason to hate on Tinkercad too much. It's simple, but if you figure out how to do it, it works. <laughs> duplicate in place actually yep duplicate that one I'm gonna duplicate this cutout box I'm gonna grab this like that so now one box is made bigger by the other or I duplicated that smaller box in place and then threw it over so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here inside the model I'm gonna grab one of these rings I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna group. Okay, so now one's gone. Then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna go inside the model. I'm gonna grab one of the bases. I'm gonna grab the box. I'm gonna group so one of those is gone. So now it looks like it's a full part with both of them there, and we didn't do anything, right? But we can move that apart now. They're two separate entities because we cut off the side of each one of those at the same location. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna modify this one just a little bit here. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. We got ourselves an AMAT A8 cut relief Yi Home Cam or other IP cam attachment for the X axis motor bracket. <laughs> the bed I think it's gonna work I just eyeballed it so I don't know it's got a little bit of I don't know what causes that it was orientated in the Z so a little bit of Z wobble or something I, comment below if you got any idea and see if the camera is even gonna fit in there Oh yeah, yep, it'll push right in there. Two and a half mil, apparently. Nope. All right, so in my typical fashion, I think I over-engineered this. I don't think we need all this jazz going on here a few issues this needs to be moved down so it can actually see the hot end and the center point here actually needs to come back about I don't know what but it needs to be about 55 from the build plate instead of what it's currently at which is like 90 so it's gotta come like yeah it's gotta come down about 40 
millimeters or so. So typical. <laughs> see what my printer is doing when I'm not around it. Not a huge deal. Printed out the new one. That is much simpler this time around. A little bit less artifacting on that one, but switched to white uh, as well. So hopefully this puts us a little above bed level this time. So that's where I have it currently. So let's see what it looks like when it's on here. All right, so that seems to work. Uh, it's it's tall enough to where you can not get interference with the bed when it's all the way flat, but you can also see it print. And then it's uh, f far enough away on these two bolts that it doesn't hit the side of the frame. So it's really nice. It gives you kind of a remote access to see how your print's doing. I think this project kind of demonstrated a few things. Failures occur, you know, you can't give up on it. There were a few times in this project where uh, just nothing was going right on three or four projects I'm, I'm doing right now. And, but it's just key to remember, use a little bit of the failures to build on, see what's wrong. And the things, you're not going to see everything right away. I'm happy with how it turned out. I'll put this up on Thingiverse. I know this isn't kind of my normal content, but I figured I'd get something out there just to show you guys I'm still alive and still working on stuff. So I'm debating on uh, changing the name of the channel too, make it kind of something more that outdoorsy, like that we do here on the channel. So uh, if you see a channel name change with something to outdoors and you're uh, subscriber box in the upcoming future don't just click off of it it might be me if you liked it give a like maybe even subscribe and keep your amps up and your filming dry